Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome all of you to the MSc uh, Master of Science in Fire and Safety Engineering Information Seminar. I'm uh, Gigi Loy, okay, and I'm the program leader of this uh, master course. So uh, today we will uh, try to look into uh, some of the contents of the program uh, with its aims, its structure, and uh, I will also introduce some facilities related to fire and safety engineering uh, in our department. Okay, and uh, some of the subjects, okay, which is the core subjects uh, in uh, the fire and safety engineering program. And uh, I will further let you know uh, some um, kind of procedures for online applications. And uh, we have an entry scholarship. Uh, okay, so uh, finally, uh, we have the contact information and Q&A sections. Okay, now, um, as you may know, uh, we have the Department of um, um, Building, Environment, and Energy Engineering, um, which used to be uh, the Building Services Engineering, but uh, we now have this B Triple E B E E E, okay, um, department. Okay, uh, we have several programs in master course, and this is mainly on the fire and safety engineering. And thereafter, we will have the FSE as the initial and acronym. So if you try to uh, register or apply for the uh, program, you have the program code of 33086. Okay. We have the one year full-time and two and a half year part-time uh, as a normal duration. Now, um, this is uh, the outlook of our EZ or Z-Brock, okay, in uh, PolyU campus, okay. And our program in FSE, okay, is a credit-based program, uh, which is having a mixed mode, okay. Now I introduce myself as um, uh, the program leader, uh, have been the program leader uh, for about um, five years. And I mainly have uh, the research interest in fire safety provisions, fire safety management, and safety engineering. Okay, so uh, for the courses that I introduce or subjects that I introduce, um, I'm responsible for uh, more than uh, say uh, six or seven courses uh, as the subject examiner. Okay, and. Um, Together with me, uh, we have the department head, uh, Professor Asif Asmani, okay, who is also uh, responsible for um, leading uh, some of the students uh, for the research methods. And we also have uh, Dr. Huang Xinyan, um, who is responsible for, for example, uh, some of the subjects like the computational fire modeling, and also the fire dynamics subject. And besides, we have Dr. Jiang Li Ming. Okay. Uh, he's responsible for um, the fire engineering system and um, the uh, legislation aspects uh, has uh, involved in some of the lectures. Okay. And now the program aims. Okay, the program aims to provide continuing education in fire and safety engineering, as its name, to those with qualification at the professional levels. Uh, I noticed that some of the applicants, or maybe some of you who are interested in this uh, program, FSC program, may have a uh, first degree in fire engineering or safety engineering, and we may also have building services engineering um, graduates, okay? And some of you may also um, have the um, others, okay? Uh, but um, we aim to have a honors degree, bachelor honors degree, okay, as the basic requirement for application. Now, the second aims to, uh, is to develop the student's knowledge in fire and safety engineering as well as your learning attitude, study skills, and intellectual and imaginative power. So through lectures, 
uh, we may have sometimes have tutorials or student-based seminar with presentation and uh, report submission. Okay, so um, your uh, skills, okay, and some of the knowledge will be um, enriched. Okay, and we also aim to concentrate on the fundamental analysis and the development of fire and safety science and engineering concept. Okay, uh, we start from the basic fundamental knowledge to uh, the uh, upstream, from the upstream to the uh, downstream with the applications, uh, we may also involve some of the uh, fire and safety science and engineering concepts. And it is intended for students to understand the requirement for providing fire safety in all the aspects, okay, and how this is achieved through the appropriate design, installation, operation, and fire safety management, okay. Um, most of the um, applicants or students having, uh, for example, the constructions um, background or work in the construction industry may understand um, we may have the design stage, we have the installation and operation and maintenance, and also the software on fire safety management who uh, is necessary to uh, make sure that all the systems work and um, they are well maintained, okay? The staff are well trained and also um, in case of emergencies like fire starts, okay? Uh, and progress uh, how they can evacuate or how they can um, take appropriate actions, okay? Now, uh, students need to consider how fire design integrate with the building and also satisfy building usage. As we may know, um, we have different building usage and um, their characteristics are different, okay? Some of them like uh, hotels, okay? We may have the transient occupants uh, who may ha have slipping risk, okay? Sometimes we may have super tall building, okay? Nowadays we have very uh, tall skyscrapers, Okay, uh, the evacuation is no longer uh, like those in old days that we have just 10 story or 20 story regular, uh, rectangular shaped buildings. And what is the tactics, okay, or strategies in fire evacuation or um, in prevention of fire? We may uh, take a look uh, into those. And we also enhance quality teaching in Hong Kong on the new topics of engineering, performance-based fire codes. Okay, and later I will introduce um, in the, for example, the subject legislation aspects of fire safety management. Okay, will be related to some uh, engineering performance-based uh, fire codes or fire engineering approach uh, to be taken uh, in Hong Kong. Now, how about the safety engineering aspects? Emphasis is put on improving the safety aspects of buildings. We may have the accident prevention, hazard assessment, risk analysis, safety management, uh, or safety management system, SMS, and safety auditing, and also um, safety in construction site. As I've mentioned, um, the uh, students uh, may work in the construction site. And in fact, in the past years, we also recognize uh, some tragic happened in the construction site with, for example, collapse of the tile crane. Uh, this uh, will be also included in the safety engineering aspects. Now we come to uh, the program structure. Now this master of science program Okay, have two approaches, okay? And students need to complete 30, three zero credits through two alternative approaches. The first approach A, okay, we need to complete 10 subjects, okay? As you may calculate 30 credits, okay? Each subject will carry three credits and including three compulsory subjects and at least four core elective subjects. 
And uh, in fact, some uh, students may uh, also uh, consider that it is a four compulsory subjects because in the later part, uh, at least four core elective, we need to select at least one of the subjects on uh, accident accident prevention, hazard assessment and control, and or safety management system and safety auditing, okay? Whereas the free compulsory subjects, okay, free compulsory subjects are the fire engineering system, fire dynamics and research methods, okay? Um, what uh, contents are uh, included in these subjects will be mentioned a bit later, okay? So uh, you may notice that three compulsory subjects and four core elective. And in fact, for the elective, core elective, we have computational fire modeling. We have legislation aspects of uh, fire safety management. We may call it FSM, fire safety management the acronym. Design considerations for fire safety management. And um, this three, okay, together with these two are regarded as the fire engineering um, disciplined uh, subjects. Uh, for the safety aspects, we have the accident prevention, uh, hazard assessment and control. We have safety management system and safety auditing. And besides these two, we have safety aspects in construction and occupational health and economics. Okay, um, these are some of the core electives that you can select from. Okay, and this is three, this is four, and we have the three left. Okay, uh, those three can be three electives. Okay, or it can be selected from the core electives, or there is a list of uh, recommended elective subjects as shown in the uh, PowerPoint slides. Okay, um, if you consider that you are focusing on fire engineering and safety engineering, I will recommend that you will take uh, the core elective subjects as stated. Okay, if you are try what uh, you are uh, trying to um, say withering your um, say um, knowledge and interests you may take some electives like lighting, engineering, uh, intelligent buildings, acoustics, energy efficient buildings, solar and apply solar energy, indoor air quality, noise and vibration, sustainability and built environment or maintenance management, or even the legal aspects of fire safety, uh, facility management, FM. Okay, so this is the, uh, First approach, approach A. The second approach is approach B. Uh, you take seven subjects, including three compulsory and at least three core electives and a BSc dissertation, okay, which is comprising of nine credits in the dissertation. However, I would like to uh, let you know that if in case you want to opt for the dissertation, please try to discuss with me first, okay? As the subject program leader, I have the responsibility to let you know more about uh, this nine credits uh, subject, okay? Or dissertation. Um, probably students may try to uh, look, uh, seek for a supervisor and have a target or proposed topic okay, before they start or register for this dissertation. And uh, so far uh, at the moment, there are more uh, students uh, opting uh, some taught subjects as, for example, 10 subjects. So they are delivered uh, in uh, semester one and semester two. Um, each semester have 13 weeks, okay? Each week, we probably have three hours of contact. Okay, so you may try to um, think, okay, how you may um, arrange and um, select or uh, 
opt for the subjects for your study. The first three, um, fire engineering system, fire dynamics, uh, research method is a must, okay, compulsory. And either one, or you can select both, in fact, okay, accident prevention, hazard assessment control, safety management system, and safety auditing. Okay. And uh, we also have some core elective subjects and recommended elective subjects. Okay. Now, uh, this is the optional research dissertation. As I've mentioned, you are strongly advised to um, consult me as the program leader before registering the uh, BSc dissertation. Okay. Now, I would like to let you know more about the subjects. Okay. And the credits required for graduation is 30 credits, I've mentioned. 10 subjects each, subject three credits, and three times 10 will be 30. Okay. Um, here for the MSc award without dissertation. Why I mentioned four instead of three here? It's because we have the these three subjects, as I've mentioned, and at least one of these as the compulsory. Okay, so a total of four. And three core electives and three other electives. With dissertation award, MSc award, you have four compulsory subjects, three core electives, which is a total of seven. Seven times three, 21, plus an other dissertation with nine credit will also be a total of 30, okay? Now, in the next section, I will try to introduce the facilities and the subject content to you. At the moment, I would like to have a brief check to see if you have any questions. Maybe if you do not have any question at the moment, we will uh, reserve the time to the last sections for uh, Q&A. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Now for the facilities, as you can see, we have the fire engine laboratory on the 10th floor of the Z block, Z block. Okay. We have two chambers. Uh, we can um, carry out uh, the uh, water-based systems uh, experiment, like the sprinkler uh, uh, discharge or water mist, okay, uh, on measuring the water discharge density. Okay. And we also have other facilities like the cone calorimeter and the high cone. Okay. Hot air wind tunnel for the punch test of spring heads is available. Okay, the setup is um, a long tunnel, which uh, allows uh, hot air pass through. And we also have the fire alarm uh, trainer and the fire detector trainer. Okay, as uh, you notice that we have different types of detectors, okay, with different operating principles. We have the heat detector with uh, uh, determined uh, temperature, we have the rate of rise of temperature, and we also have the smoke detectors with um, ionization type, photoelectric type detectors, and critical oxygen index apparatus, testing of ignitability of the building materials, okay, film cupboard sprinkler water spray, as you can uh, see also in this diagram with the chamber with the standard size of the room corner fire test. Uh, film cupboard, okay, with uh, some uh, toxic gas, okay, just, or films emitted can be extracted. Smoke detector test rig, and also the fire detector in the an outer chamber, okay, uh, has to be mounted on the ceiling of the uh, chamber, okay? And, for the subjects, uh, we have a total of uh, five subjects related to fire engineering, another four subjects related to safety engineering, 
and one subject for research methods. Okay, so a total of 10 subjects available in the fire and safety programs. Okay, okay. Now, um, sorry. Now in the computational fire modeling for uh, buildings, uh, which is responsible by uh, Dr. Um, Xinyan Wang, um, he will mention, um, of course, what is a fire model and the computer fire modeling instead of the full-scale burning test, okay, is repeatable or it saves course or it um, uh, kind of, um, say, uh, easier to be uh, arranged, okay, although there are many um, fundamental knowledge required to be uh, needed for uh, operating uh, the modeling um, or the models. Okay, we need to understand the principles. Um, song models, field models will also be introduced. Okay, and we also try to have clear understanding of the role of computational fire modelings in the fire safety design. Okay. And some of the techniques, okay, um, both song modeling and field modeling will be um, introduced. And we also have the application of the results, okay, of the models. Now for the fire engine system, which is one of the compulsory subjects, okay, uh, it's need to equip with uh, students with the in-depth and up-to-date knowledge of the fire engine systems based on uh, rational and critical analysis of the system. Okay. Uh, in this subject, we will introduce um, the active fire services installations or systems like the water-based systems, sprinklers, uh, fire hydrant and hose reels or water mist. And we also have a firefighting foam. Okay. And besides, we have the non-water-based system, like the fire detection system, alarm system, which is very important, um, especially their reliability, okay, to be considered uh, in the, um, notifying occupants for evacuation. And we also have um, a smoke management system. We noticed that smoke is the major killer for uh, people uh, in fires and we need to extract some of the smoke and have the smoke control system being operated, uh, either mechanical or uh, dynamic or uh, static, uh, that natural ventilation, et cetera. Gas protection system, okay. Besides water-based system, we noticed that we may not, water may not be able to be used to extinguish all types of fire, which, includes electrical fire and uh, flammable liquid fire because of the electrical shock and the spillage fire respectively. Okay, so uh, the technology will be introduced in the fire engine system. Now for fire dynamics, okay, um, this subject is to provide students a detailed theoretical base of the fire dynamics. This is also an other compulsory subjects in our fire safety engineering program, fire and safety engineering program. And it is also uh, aims to study the burning property of the materials, details fire behavior of materials and also the building fire safety design. Okay, as you can see from the diagram, when the light matches, excuse me, ignites at the corner, uh, like the solver, okay, it uh, takes only three minutes for the uh, fire plume, okay, to rise with the ceiling jet and then uh, have the form of a smoke layer. And due to the radiant heat flux, okay, that is shining on the solver or furniture inside the compartment or the combustible burn at the same time in fresh over. Okay, and we also considered uh, different 
stages of the five growths. Um, ignition growth stage, uh, fully developed stage, and decay stage. Okay, and the steepest slope of the curve, temperature time curve, okay, will be the fresh over to occur. And significant amount of um, heat released, okay, or the significant rise in temperature, like uh, 500 to 600 degrees Celsius, and having 20 kilowatt per meter square heat flux on the floor level, and also emerging flame from open windows or doors will be uh, noticed in fresh over. Now, as you can see or remember, there are two subjects related to fire safety management. In fact, how to provide safety? Uh, we have some hardware like uh, some active design, active fire services installation, as I've mentioned earlier, okay? This uh, are at the active systems. We also have the passive building design, which is related to more structure to the structure, related to the structure, like uh, the means of escape, uh, the uh, passage uh, with the corridor and the number of staircases that corridor width and staircase width and the travel distance, etc. We also have the means of access for the firemen to uh, fight the fire and also rescue people. And further, we have the um, fire resisting construction, okay, which we have the fire resistance rating, FRR. Okay. And besides this hardware, we need to have software, fire safety management, okay, to provide total safety. Okay. And in fact, um, Fire safety management will be included with uh, some strategies and plans like the maintenance plan, staff training plan, and the fire action plan. Okay, the first two plans are under the normal operation of the premises or the business, whereas the fire action plan is at the emergency mode of operation. Now, for the legislation aspects, as its name implies, legislation related to um, regulations, uh, code of practice, or some laws of Hong Kong. It tried to preserve life and prevent injury in case of fire. And uh, the second uh, important uh, purpose is to protect um, the building content and the goods inside the premises. As you may know, um, the buildings department have issued the code of practice for fire safety in buildings 2011, okay, with the updated versions in 2015. Uh, here we have the means of escape, okay, fire resistant construction and means of access. Okay, means of escape is for us, the occupant whereas means of access is for the firemen. Maybe, in fact, some of you as firemen also notice that it is important okay, for your um, firefighting and uh, rescue of people. Uh, fire safety management is another important part, okay? And guides, guidelines on fire engineering is another one. Okay, design considerations for fire safety management. As we may notice that um, as um, we have more new architectural features uh, and building shape and uh, green building and sustainable buildings in Hong Kong nowadays, uh, such as uh, we also have some dense urban environment like the Kaitet Sports Park, okay, we may need to um, say use uh, the fire engine approach or the performance based fire codes in order to design for the um, modern building um, structure or the shape and uh, the usage. 
So the design consideration includes uh, the design of the fire protection, um, the appropriate design knowledge for fire safety management is um, included in this subject. And it also review the main performance characteristics, the limitation and application of existing fire safety systems. Okay. And uh, it also helps to review the design criteria in various fire safety design. Okay. And the timeline comparison between the fire development and evacuation damage to property with the available safe egress time, the ASAT, and RSAT required safe egress or escape time with a safety margin as their difference, okay, AZ minus RZ, okay, will also be discussed. And in fact, this uh, whole timeline diagram shows from ignition uh, with the detection, alarm, and also evacuation of the occupants, which include pre-movement time, recognition time, and response. We also have the travel time and also uh, evacuation complete, okay, which is the total evacuation. Now, uh, the previous five subjects is fire safety, uh, fire engineering related. Now, uh, the next four subjects are safety engineering uh, related. So um, I will quickly go through that because I would like to reserve some time for your questions. Um, now, uh, the accident prevention has assessment and control uh, with the introduction of accidents, okay, uh, with um, some incidents that is caused immediately and um, an injury to the occupants. And we may also have damage to the properties or equipment. Okay, like uh, falling off uh, someone from the ladder, okay, working at height, okay, and fog lift, dropping a load, okay, may also be considered. And some of the uh, incidents occurred over a longer period of time or extended period of time that will lead to hearing loss, okay, and illness resulting from longer exposure to the chemicals, Okay, with inhalation of the chemical fumes. So these okay, uh, will be introduced in the accident prevention. And we have the hazard uh, assessment, okay, and the meaning of hazard, and um, say how we can control, for example, with the hierarchy of control, uh, with elimination, Substitution, um, engine approach, administrative approach, and uh, personal protective equipment. Okay, this um, say a list of uh, control will also be introduced during the lectures. Now for the safety management system and safety auditing. Okay. Uh, this is divided into two parts, the SMS and the safety auditing. Um, in fact, uh, I noticed some of our students is already registered safety auditor. Okay, so uh, you may learn SMS and safety auditing with, uh, for example, the history and growth of the safety and health at work and uh, the errors of safety management, development of the programs, and how Hong Kong um, and the overseas safety legislation aspects related or applicable to the fire uh, and the safety management systems will be introduced. And for the safety auditing, okay, the theory of safety audit and functions system of safety auditing and general practice will be uh, mentioned. So accident prevention has assessment and control Safety management system and safety auditing. Either one will be a, a compulsory subjects. You need to take either one or both. You can take both. Safety aspect in construction. 
Okay. Uh, now, this subject uh, related to the construction safety. Uh, we will introduce the Hong Kong construction industry. And um, for example, with the economic success and also the state of construction safety and some structure of the Hong Kong's construction industry, which is similar to other uh, development countries, developed countries, uh, small numbers of large corporate contractor and many small private contractor and subcontractors, etc. Okay, these characteristics will be mentioned and the legislations, the nature, safe systems of work will also be uh, taught. Now, uh, last but not least, occupational health and economics. Okay, uh, in fact, the occupational health or disease related uh, to um, the people exposed to specific hazard at the workplace. Now, uh, we have the biological, chemical, physical, economic, psychological, or psychosocial, okay, and safety aspects to be included, okay. For the economics, um, we notice that it relates to the um, study of work, and more specifically, it is the analysis of work tasks to identify some ways to maximize the efficiency and also the safety. Okay, so these topics will be introduced in the subject. Now, um, we have five, five engineering, four safety engineering and one research method. Now for the research method, um, we have the problem identification and scoping. Uh, setting of objectives, literature, search and review is the main uh, piece, okay, in the subject, okay. Students need to write a literature review report with the supposed uh, methodology, uh, but not near uh, to carry out the uh, research um, uh, in uh, say implementation of surveys, no, but uh, literature review and methodologies. Um, we also have other aspects like plagiarism, using Turnitin software to be um, uh, used when students submit their uh, assignment or report. Okay. So uh, online application and entry scholarship. Uh, in fact, if you try to type taught postgraduate, poly U, you may go to the um, website as shown in the left hand side. Okay. Uh, you may check the box or try to type in fire and safety engineering, and then it will emerge. And you click the program, and a list of requirements okay, will be. Uh, pop up. Okay. And entry scholarship, uh, the amounts, conditions, number, and application procedures are stated. Now, for the 2022 and 23 intake cohort, no application is required. You just need to apply for our fire and safety engineering program. Uh, and then you will be uh, in the pool, okay? And we will sort out and select from the applications received for the admissions of the uh, MNH and MSc programs offered by the uh, Department of uh, BEEE. Now for contact information, in case you find any questions, uh, you can call me at uh, 2766-7959, okay, my direct line, okay, or you can send me emails, c.h.gg.lui at polyu.edu.hk, okay, and we also have admission officer, uh, Ms. Lear Lee, and uh, subject registration, uh, Samuel Learn, uh, Mr. Samuel Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, who is responsible for the registration of subjects uh, when you are um, admitted 
to the program. Okay, now the deadline for application is the 30th of April, 2023. Okay, which is a Sunday, I think. Okay, online application is uh, all right. Okay, and this is what I want to mention today. And if you have any question, please feel free to type in, or you can, uh, I think you can also turn on your mic to ask for fact questions. Okay, iPhone, how many people will be recruited in this major this year? How many mainland students are there? Uh, in the upcoming cohort, we target to at, uh, recruit or uh, meet 40 students, four zero. Okay, how many mainland students are there? Uh, we do not have a particular percentage of um, quota for mainland students. Uh, mainly, uh, we will look into uh, the pool of applicants, both uh, mainland students and uh, local students and see their uh, academic performance, working experience, um, say um, their relevant field of work or relevant field of study. Okay. And um, sometimes the prof uh, professional qualifications, etc. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Uh, so I briefly type in, okay, how many mainland students are there? Mm, for existing, uh, each year, uh, the number are different. And in the past years, there may be two to five each year, depends. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, please? We still have, oh, it's already 4.42, but uh, no one follows uh, our uh, seminar uh, in the coming hour. Well, maybe we still have some time for your questions. Any question, please? Some of you may be interested. Okay, I have been given a conditional offer already. Okay, congratulations. And what should I prepare for this program if I have no file background? For the conditional offer, uh, usually it will be given for students who are still studying for their uh, degree. Okay. And I think you may, of course, try to your best to complete uh, your degree and strive for improvement. So uh, 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 work for the best. And for this program, if you do not have five background, I think uh, you may also uh, try to start uh, looking at some relevant books or general papers, okay? Um, as I have introduced some of the topics to you, of the subjects to you, uh, you may try to, well, uh, open your eyes wider to, to this area, okay? So I think if you uh, have applied for our fire and safety engineering program, you may have certain interest in it, although you do not have a uh, fire background, okay? So I think... Um, you can you can try to um, read more related news or uh, books or publications. Okay, I hope my suggestion help. Simon. Okay, thank you. Ah, before I I uh, yeah I answer the questions. I think about the assessment, okay? Uh, some of the students would like to know what uh, normally the assessment will be. Uh, for most of the subjects, uh, about uh, 70 or 80%, uh, they have continued assessment and also the examination component. 
Okay. Usually, uh, the continuous assessment is about 40% and examination is around 60%. And for the continuous assessment, we may have, um, say, in-class test, uh, seminar uh, presentation or seminar report submission. We may have case study report or assignments, literature review reports. Um, we may have laboratory works or experiments with logbooks or formal report to be submitted. Okay, so of course, uh, all these may not um, appear in one subject, but uh, one subject may have uh, kind of two of them. Okay, any two of them. Two to three, yeah, two normally. And then for the examination, it will be a good news for some of students who like open book examination. Okay. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are still keeping open book examination for our fire and safety engineering uh, subjects. Okay. Except uh, computational fire modeling and fire dynamics without the examination component. But, uh, well, need to uh, confirm when you enter or when you studied in our program and when you choose the subject, you will find or notice more about that. Are there any subjects we can enroll during summer semester? I'm afraid not uh, because we usually have evening classes uh, during the semester one, which is from September to November, having the examination in December. Semester two, which starts, in fact, uh, next week, okay, uh, from January to April, and we have the examination at the end of April or early May, okay, and we do not have summer semester, okay, at least for our subjects, uh, it will not be delivered in the summer semester, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Well, uh, if I can offer any help, don't uh, hesitate to contact me. Okay, I show the uh, email address and also the uh, telephone number to you again in case you have any questions before the 30th of April. Well, of course, I hope that you will uh, apply it earlier, okay, so that you have a um, larger chance, okay, well, maybe because of the available seats are still uh, more, okay. Um, so I hope uh, to see you soon, okay, in September. And uh, in the past years, uh, due to the COVID, we have the online class. But now uh, in the last semester, starting from last semester, we already have the face-to-face -face, uh, mode of delivery of lectures. So the lectures usually in weekdays, evening, and uh, sometimes we may have uh, one or two sections in Saturday morning or afternoon because of the experiment. Okay. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And as I said, hope to see you soon, okay, in September. And I also take this opportunity to wish you a prosperous and blessed new year. Okay, bye-bye.